My name is Sister Connie Harkin of the School Sisters of Notre Dame. I live here in Peace River. I entered in 1963 and I was professed in 65. So in a sense, I'm almost 57 years as a vowed religious. My name is Sister Mary Jean Davidson and I'm a school sister of Notre Dame. I entered in 59 and took my first vows in 61 and I've been a sister celebrating my 60th anniversary of vows this past year. You might say it first hit me in grade three. I had a wonderful teacher by the name of Mother Brida of the Faithful Companions. This sister, I just admired her to no end. She just seemed so kind, so caring, so loving. And I remember saying to her, I want to be a sister like you someday. And her reply was, maybe you will. And so by grade 12, it was really becoming strong within me that this is the way to go. This is what I need to do with my life. And I think God keeps knocking at the door, and finally I opened the door and let him into my life, as it were. And God has been good to me ever since. Um, I just pray to God I've been good to him too. You can see the person behind me in a picture. Uh, her name is Mother Teresa Gerhardinger. Uh, she is our foundress. And she founded our community uh, in 1833, certainly. I am very uh, happy to be part of that family of the School Sisters of Notre Dame. So grade 12, it, it, there was a regular retreat, and then the weekend was going to be a retreat for anyone thinking of a vocation, religious life, and so on. During that regular retreat, I can't sort of describe it, but at prayer, times quiet in the chapel. It's like inside me, it was like little nudging invitation. Come, follow me, come. And I would answer, Jesus, you know, I'm graduating this year. I was going to go to teacher's college in Thunder Bay, but Jesus, I have a boyfriend and and uh, we were just talking, well, maybe after teacher's college, two years, well, maybe we would get married. So here I am talking, <laughs> talking inside here in my heart and still hearing the invitation. Oh my, I just stayed there and I said, Jesus, it would be so much easier if you just told me. And he said, my love for you is leaving you free. If you were to follow and feel called to marriage, come to me, husband, family, you know I would love you. I in God, I love you. I'm inviting you to follow me. Oh, I, honestly, that was the crunch. That was, oh, I finally let go. I said, God, I'm coming. I want to follow you. I desire to give you my life. And I made that decision. I hear you calling, and I give you my life. Our community had sent out a flyer letting all the sisters know in the Canadian province we were opening a house in Peace River. And I thought, wonderful, we're going up north and to an archdiocese, Gruard McLennan, where there are needs. And I had come from being on the missions in Peru a number of years before. And so I always was longing to be, you know, um, 
in the outback and on the periphery and with the poor. And uh, I was so happy we were opening this mission. And right away I said, are there indigenous people in the archdiocese? And she said, we are sending you to Peace River to walk among the indigenous people, to be a presence of church among them. I was so happy. I've taught school from 1967 till 2008. During that time, I taught in Ontario, far, far east from here. <laughs> and I also taught in England, which is even further east from here. I came to Peace River to the Archdiocese of Gerard McLennan in 2018. I was responsible for sacramental preparation, choir direction, a spiritual advisor for the CWL, the Catholic Women's League, visiting the care home, uh, the hospital, and I've enjoyed it. Uh, some people call it retirement. I would like to call it refirement because it's sort of new fire that comes in <laughs> and gets me excited about what I'm doing. Um, I'm learning lots uh, and I, th I feel like I can never stop learning and I pray to God I don't stop learning. The greatest joys, I would say the fact that I get to see the children that I taught grow up. I have a special little book where I've got all my students' names in since 1967. So when you think of 1967 till 2008, so that be, I would say I've had hundreds and hundreds of children. They're very special to me, and I still hear from a couple of them. As recent as this Christmas, receiving a Christmas card with three of the boys that I taught in this one particular family. I do love to uh, look through the names, try to picture them again in my mind, and uh, in my heart too. What I learned those seven years in Peru is that, take off my shoes, listen. They will show or speak what is needed. And that's how you become just a companion, a presence. If you could know how present Jesus is among the poor, and how they know him. I was learning who Jesus is. I was humbly touched. Oh, I loved the work with the youth. When we would have uh, preparatory meetings out at Camp Artaban, one of them said to me after, I just love it when you talk, Sister Mary Jean because you're so convinced of it. And I said, I said, yes, yeah, I believe it. I'm not trying to make you believe it. No, they said, we don't feel that. It's just we love to hear it because we know you believe. You believe it. World Day of Consecrated Life is to give thanks to God. His love for us, for our world, and desiring to call persons to proclaim His love in the world. You know, we're just, I always say, I'm just a human being, and like, that He calls us. I think it's important because we don't hear enough positivity about church sometimes in our society today, I would wish that they could turn the table and say, what are some of the good things that are happening because there are religious in the world? What do we contribute to this world? So to make people aware that there is another way of life as well. And it's not uh, the old thinking, oh dear, you know, you've given up this, you've given up that. Is it really giving up? Uh, I believe it's a time to give not just giving up. So I think it's important, that, and I'm grateful that the Holy Father has even uh, continued to perpetuate the, the Day for Consecrated Life, because it draws people's attention to that feast, to that celebration, as it were, and that we do exist. And I want them to see, too, that we are human beings. 
You know, we're not angels walking around with big wings. We're human beings. We cry. We laugh. Uh, we get angry. <laughs> we can be calm. And uh, I guess I want to live up to my name. Hearken. I want to listen. Pray <laughs> and be open. Take the time to listen. We live in a very busy world. I think that's part of the reason sometimes it, it's very hard to hear God's voice. We need time to be quiet. We need time to be. And each day I have to listen to what God is asking of me. It's not the same as somebody poking me on the shoulder and saying, you know, you do this, you do this. No, it's within your heart. It's not an intellectual thing. It's, it's in your heart. Something is pulling you. And I think it's someone who's pulling you. And it's up to us to respond to that. I am feeling that the way the world is today and life, no matter where we are, in a town like Peace River or in a big city, or on a mission. You know, we make mistakes, we're on a path, and we have regrets, or we fall, and we rise. And everyone's life is like that. But what I so believe is that I think God today is wanting those very, very people. He's desiring they come. Maybe they've uh, been excluded for some reason or another. That's who he wants. I believe it. I believe they're the ones to convert us. Yeah, it's been a real, um, a real journey. Um, hasn't always been easy. There are Yes, there are joys, there are sorrows, uh, but I think the joys would outweigh the sorrows. At times I used to think, oh, maybe I should be out there raising those 14 kids that I was thinking I was going to have someday. But instead, God was giving me more than 114 kids. And as someone once advised me, you've got so much love, you need to share it. And so why not? Why not share it in this way? People do ask, like, well, well, why do you stay if all, you know, if you ever have hard things happen, why do you stay? I think it's because my hand is in God's, and He's, he's encouraging me. Um, God is with me, and deep down in my heart, I know He won't let me go. And it's not a clasp of, you better be here. No, He leaves me totally free, um, and He invites me to be who I am who I really am. You know, the greatest is falling in love with Jesus, but it's not, you know, me and Jesus. It's wherever I've been called, whatever courses invited to take, wherever been sent, a whole world opened up like it, it's love is the bottom line for everyone. You know, everyone needs love, seeks love, and I experience it pressed down, overflowing everywhere. Everywhere. R especially in the real gutsy life that every one of us are living. The word sister in front of my name, although I might not insist on that, um, what is a sister other than someone who cares for you, who really uh, can walk with you, cry with you, laugh with you, and just enjoy life and be grateful for the many blessings God has given me.